So Prabhupada told us in Mayapur that he needed a road to go to the Ganges. That when he lived in Calcutta, he used to regularly bathe in the Ganges. And that if he could bathe in the Ganges in Mayapur, it would extend his lifespan. At that time, the Ganges was about a, almost a kilometer away. And there were so many people's land, it was very difficult. We were trying to get a piece, uh, a road to the Ganges, but it was very difficult. Sometimes Prabhupada in the morning, he would walk to the Ganges. So this day he asked me to lead the way to the Ganges and we went over the fields walking on the little aisles that are in between the rice fields. And finally we got to the side of the Ganges. It was in the winter, maybe in the month of November, this month, like starting to get a little cool. Maybe it was a little later. I can't remember whether it was at the Gaur Purnima time. But there was the, the Ganges that time was very low and the water was clear. Now you look at the water, it's not clear, it's, it's saffron color. But this time you could see right to the bottom that they hadn't released so much water from the dam. There's the Faraka barrage, so they hadn't released the water. Then there was uh, maybe about a dozen sannyasis and senior devotees. Prabhupada was walking alongside the Ganges. And then he said, let's take a bath. But the secretary said that, well, we didn't bring any gumcha or anything. He looked around and said, well, there's no women here. We have our copins. So then <clears throat> they took off the, what they call the utariya, this bib-like cloth that sannyasis wear and opened it up and Prabhupada used that as a uh, gamsha and uh, he went into the water. The Prabhupada didn't know swimming, but he liked to bathe in the Ganges regularly. So then, in fact, on the day of tomorrow on his Vyasa, on his uh, Jirubhav festival, sometimes we take Prabhupada to the Ganges and give him a bath because he likes to take a bath in the Ganges. So then he did some kind of unique mudra where he put his fingers over all the holes in the head, put his thumbs over the ear. He left this finger out, left the middle finger over the eyes, these two fingers over the nose, and this finger over the mouth. And then he dunked three times. Then some devotee, I think it was uh, Madhur Visa Maharaj at that time, I think he started to splash Prabhupada, and everybody started splashing Prabhupada. Just held up his hands. Like, everybody got the message. <laughs> Maintain the decorum, the seriousness. This is, and then uh, so Prabhupada was bathing there. I don't know if it was, that was the time or sometime he told about don't drink water under water on a fast day. Some days you do near jala fasting, but if you're going into the Ganges for a bath, you go underwater, so drinking water underwater <laughs> on a fast day. But nobody can see you when you're under the water. <laughs> Outside you're looking very austere, no drinking, no water, near jola. But when you're under the water, <coughs> <laughs> you're cheating and drinking. So that was a famous uh, past time here in Mayapur where he bathed in the Ganges with the devotees. 
So now the Ganges has moved next to his Samadhi and we can take him very easily, fulfill his desire to bathe. There was uh, his time for the Damodar, so I just... Uh, when Prabhupada would come into the temple, then he would take his darshan of the deities and then he would circumambulate. And just like when, when we do take Prabhupada and the circumambulate, we ring the bell, at least on one bell we have. He had two bells, one on each side. And he would ring the bell and sometimes he would wave his hand, tell the devotees, like motion to them to jump. So the devotees would jump up and down. There's some videos of this. And like this, Prabhupada would take his circumambulation three times around the deities. At that time, the deities were in the lotus building. So then, <coughs> Prabhupada, after bowing down, he'd sit down and give his, the chant Jai Radha Madhava, and give his... Uh, we do Guru Puja, then he'd chant Jai Radha Madhava, the Bhyadu Kirtan, then he'd chant Jai Radha Madhava, then he'd give class. I remember one day I was leading the Kirtan and I wanted to get everybody to chant. So after chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare um, then I, I chanted, I said, Bolo, Bolo which in Bengali means chant, chant. So I said bolo bolo a few times. It was maybe becoming something repetitive. It was repeating a number of times, bolo bolo. Then Prabhupada called me over. He said, don't add any more new words to the mantra. <laughs> So, you always had to be on your toes. And whenever Prabhupada first came to Mayapur, he, would, he was very <coughs> complimentary. He would think, oh, everything's so clean and so nice. We don't know that would happen. It would stay like that maybe one or two days. And then uh, that time, Bhavananda and myself, we were co-directors here. Then at some point in time he would spot something and then his whole mood would change and he would start from that point on it would be all instructions how to improve the things but initially he was uh, very appreciative of everything so when i remember this one he went up to his room after the reception he just was arriving in mayapur he sat in the room upstairs you can see his seat there was a golden goblet of water, he took it, he would drink without touching. He'd drink the water, pouring it high. Then he leaned back and, ah, Mayapur. Living or dying in Mayapur, it's all the same. You live in Mayapur, you're in the spiritual world. If you leave your body here, you go back to Godhead. So you hope you're all having a nice time in the spiritual world here? Very nice time? How nice? Pretty nice. Because you're getting such nice association from uh, Radhanath Swami and Indadumna Maharaj and Vyasaki and many, uh, many others. <clears throat> one just last pastime when we should go to offer a Dhammadar is uh, once during the Gaur Purnima festival Prabhupada noticed that there wasn't so many devotees at the class and he asked what happened and we told him that devotees were sick they were getting Bengal belly diarrhea so then he said uh, show me then we took him over to the long building and there the 
Brahmacharis were lying down holding their stomach. Oh. Maybe they had eaten too many things. And then Prabhupada looked and uh, subsequently he gave us some instruction. He said, you see, when you're in Mayapur, whatever devotional service you do, you get a thousand times the benefit. And then this is the month of Dhamadhar, so you get a hundred times extra for Dhamadhar. So there will be about a hundred thousand times the benefit right now. But that I'm just adding that. But Prabhupada said a thousand times. And uh, some other time he said a hundred times for Dhamadhar. But uh, he said, but if you do a thousand times zero, zero service, then what does that up add up to? Thousand times zero is zero. So he said, what's the use of coming to the Holy Dham and then you're all sick and they're sick and they can't do service? So he said, we should give them lots of activities to do, lots of parikramas, lots of twenty-four kirtan he set up for Gorpurnima, different programs, because if they're very active, then they can be, they can get an appetite that they can digest even a stone. <laughs> so then Prabhupada started also this, uh, sending everyone on parikrama and having the devotees chant and dance. So Prabhupada was caring so much about the devotees, how they can get the best advantage of being in the holy dham and get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He also said one of the special features of being in the Mayapur Dham is that you develop your attachment for Lord Chaitanya. We hope all of you are feeling more attached for Goranga! 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 Hare Krishna. Thank you very much.